In this Roblox Studio tutorial, we are continuing on with the rebirth system for our tapping simulator game. Under Service Script Service, open up the script we called Stats. And let's open up the other script we were working on, which was the local script under the clicker GUI. First I want to rename this remote event we created. We are not really adding a new rebirth from here. Since it is just updating the rebirth GUI. So I should probably call this update rebirth GUI instead. Follow what I do here to rename yours. Under replicated storage. Rename the add rebirth event. To update rebirth GUI. In the local script, make these changes. The reason I am doing this is, just to make it clear to myself what these events do. As we develop the program more, it will get confusing if our names are not clearly stating what the event does. This is good programming practice, so that you and others can actually understand your code. Okay, that's done. Let's do the same on the stats script. Click on the stats script. Change line 7, using the same name as the remote event we just changed. Change this variable as well. What this is actually going to do is update the rebirth table or GUI. So let's call it that. Make sure you use the same variable name down here on line 45. Okay, let's move on. This prepare to update rebirths function is going to do something important a bit later, such as clean up our scroll frame to kind of refresh the data inside it. So the values change in our rebirth GUI. For example, if we have a look at our rebirth GUI, we have two things inside the scrolling frame, which our script is actually going to generate these from server storage. I'll show you this in a second, let's go back to the script. Inside this function, we are going to call another function to handle the duplication of the buttons and values that are inserted into the scrolling frame. I'm just going to call it update rebirth table and send it the player and rebirth amount as parameters. Now, add a local variable to store the current rebirth amount in. I am calling mine rebirth amount. This is going to get the rebirth amount from leader stats. Actually, we haven't added rebirths to our leader stats yet, so we will do that right now also. Just up here inside the player added function, we created the leader stats. So we just need to add rebirths to this, so we can store and update the value for rebirths. Follow what I do here, I am just adding three lines of code in here like this. Okay, we will check if that works in a second. Let's fix these underlying bits in our function first. From the on server event, it will send the player object, so we can add a variable as a parameter here like this, which will store the player for us. This PLR will need to be the same since I called it player, we can just change it here as well. This update rebirth table function, I am commenting this out for now, so that we can test if the rebirth leader stats worked. Yes, you can see rebirth is now showing there in the leader stats leaderboard. It didn't have a capital R, so I am quickly changing that. Okay, great. Let's go back to our stats script and add some more to our function. Just uncomment this line now. And we haven't actually declared this function yet. So let's create that now. If you are just new to programming, you will soon learn that functions are like your bread and butter tool. They allow you to really organize your code, since the aim of a function is to do exactly one specific thing. And then whenever you need to do that one thing, just call that function. It really makes life simple once you understand how and why to use functions. For example, this function's one thing is to update the rebirth table. And notice, when I called it, I sent two parameters to it, which were the player and the rebirth amount. Okay, let's check the GUI and see what we need to do next. Adding a UI grid to the scrolling frame will help organize the positions of the buttons inside our rebirth GUI, which is what we want our script to do. So first, Click on the plus sign next to the scrolling frame and add a UI grid layout. Change the settings in the properties, follow what I do. Change fill direction max cells to 1. Change the x axis to scale 1, remove the offset by setting it to 0. On the y axis, change the offset to 25. There you go, you can start to see how it will work. Our script will be either adding buttons or image labels into this scrolling frame. And as you can see, the more we add to the scrolling frame, the UI grid layout positions them for us. 
which is very nice. So we don't need the button and text label here. Instead, we can now move these to server storage so that our script can clone them and add them to the scrolling frame for us. Just highlight them both and drag them up and drop them into server storage like this. One more thing here, just hide the rebirth GUI as we don't need to show it until the player clicks something. To hide it, set the visibility to false by unchecking it. Back to our stats script. Okay, let's clean this up a bit and make some comments so we remember what these functions do. The function call here is calling the update rebirth table function, which is the next thing we are going to script. But before we can update our rebirth GUI, we probably need something for the player to click on to actually show and hide the rebirth GUI. Again, let's confirm that we are getting to this function by adding a print line and test it. So when we click the clicker, it should be firing the event that calls the prepare function, which calls the update rebirth function and prints this line. So it did print that out, which confirms it's all working. To finish today's video, let's quickly set up the rebirth icon for the player to click. Then in the next video, we should be able to complete our script to make it work. Under Starter GUI, click the plus icon and add a new screen GUI. Rename it to Left GUI. Click the plus sign and add an image button. I just opened the toolbox and searched images for rebirth. Then I copied the asset ID as shown. Back on the image label, I am going to paste the asset ID like this. Make these other changes to move it into position. Now, click the plus sign next to left GUI and add a local script so that we can check when the button is clicked and show the rebirth GUI. Type out this code, we have used similar code before. This is the line that is making the rebirth GUI visible. Let's run it to check if it works. Yes, when I clicked it, it has in fact showed the rebirth GUI, but we have no way to close it. So let's quickly fix that. Inside the rebirth GUI, make this frame visible by ticking the box here. This allows me to see what I am doing. We will hide this again in a second. Click the plus sign on the frame and add an image button. This will be our close button. Again in the toolbox, I am just searching for an image of an X so that I can use it for my button. This will do, right click and copy the asset and then paste it on your button as shown. Okay, good. just make these changes to the properties. I am just resizing it, moving it into position and removing the background and border. That looks great. So one quick local script and we are done for today. Click the plus sign next to rebirth GUI and add a local script. I pasted this code from the other local script we just did. This local script for the close button just needs to hide the GUI. So they are very similar. Change true to false here. Let's run it to check. Okay, we have an error. The image button is not a valid member. This means we have the path wrong and need to check our parents and child's. Let me show you. So there is a frame before the image button. Have a look on the left in the explorer and you will see. When you refer to these in your script they must be the same or you get that error. Let's run it now, we must be done. Okay great, we can click the icon and it opens the GUI. And the close icon closes it. Great, we have everything set up to start scripting the rebirth GUI. That will be the next video guys. This is the god of coding at Epic Blocks to signing off. See you in the next one.